That's the slow Norris up close. The cutest animal. Ooh. Be careful with his, with his bite. He is venomous, sir. I'm Jack Randall. Oh, Ram! See that? That was crazy cool. I'm finding every animal on the planet. Whoa. I'm in the wild. I think it's down here. Whoa, Up close and personal. And a massive snake! OK, there's a scorpion on my arm. This is just remarkable. Look at that. Reticulated python in the water. Come on, let's go. I'm in Sumatra. I'm going to be working with the people on the front line of conservation out here. Cobra by the tail. This is unbelievable. <sighs> Woo. It's crazy driving through Sumatra, climbing. And we will turn left again. We've just arrived into the town in Sumatra where there's a slow loris to be rescued. Slow loris, really cute primate, actually a venomous animal. And the person that's got that slow loris is actually surrendering the animal to the police. He can't look after that animal anymore. It's really hard to keep slow lorises. So hopefully we'll be able to get the slow loris and then capture it and then release it back into the wild. That's so you. You are... Has he got the slow loris in his house? Yes. So this is the documentation. To, to give permission, just in case we get stopped with the slow loris, that we've actually got permission to, to rescue it and release it into the wild. Oh, I can't wait to see the slow loris. I've never seen one close up, so it's a good experience for me as well. Well, here you are. We've got the cage all ready for the slow loris. We're at the house. It's in there. We're, we're getting closer. I can't wait to see this slow loris. They have the cutest animals. It's really important that the guys wear these gloves because actually they lick a kind of a gland on their arm, which makes them venomous. So if they bite you, it's really quite dangerous. Oh, wow. That is cute. Such a tiny, adorable little animal. We're taking the cage outside so we can work with the animal in a safer way. You can see his little boy. Look at those big eyes, though. There you go. Masukkan terus. Terus iya. Okay. Well done. Very very stressed. I cannot wait to release this animal back into the wild. Got it slightly wrong. The owner of the house actually rescued the slow loris. It was moving along the streets. He rescued it. It's been there for five days. He contacted Bobby, Bobby, and then contacted the other forestry. Yes, it is very rare to find a person like him. A yeah. very cooperative and really helpful. Even though he really pushing me to come to Binjai to rescue the slow loris. He's a good man. That's good. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Bobby. Thank you yeah, too. Good, good. <laughs> Cheers. Well, because it's going to be quite a long trip in the car, we're just covering up the Solaris because this is during the day. These animals, they're nocturnal animals. They don't like the sun. They don't like the heat. And they're actually very shy. Unfortunately, it's that shy and adorable character that appeals to people looking for a pet, leading to one reason why they are often poached from the wild and their populations in the wild are declining. And the forestry officer explained that this isn't the only reason they are poached. So, so people take slow lorises from the wild and they think that the, the bones are useful for taking away bad spirits? Yes. Wow, okay. And that's a big threat for the animal, the slow yeah. loris. In some people, they use this slow loris as a black magic, you know, because some people, they believe it, the bone is, if you have the bone from this slow loris, your house, you cannot, people cannot go steal it, your thing, or your money, whatever, or something like that. And people take these animals from the wild? Of course. Let's go and release uh, this little loris in, back in the jungle where he belongs. We never found out exactly how the slow loris ended up in the city. But that's not the team's job to work that out. 
Fortunately, the owner of this house found Valoris and called the team to come out and rescue it. All right, let's go. It's a bit of a rush. We really have to be quick because the slow Loris is getting hot. It's quite stressed. We need to get to the forest. This is a really typical day for Samiko. Trips back and forth to the nearby cities, towns and villages. The trade in wild animals is truly eye-opening. And Sumatra is at the heart of a lot of wildlife trade, simply because it still has such an amazing diversity of wildlife here. And some of the most untouched, pristine rainforests left in the world. This is what it's like to be a frontline conservationist. Well, here you go. This is the entrance to the national park. This is where we're going to release the slow loris back into the wild. So, Bobby, you ready? We're going for yes, it. we're going to go. Cool. Okay. Okay. Slow loris is loved to live up in the tall canopy layer in an area with an abundance of fruiting trees. This place looks perfect for a release. Look at that, that's the slow loris up close. It's quite funny how a venomous mammal actually is quite a shy animal. But look at those hands, so human-like. It is a primate, really small primate, got those thumbs. Oh, be careful with his, with his bite. Uh. Let's release this guy. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> very quick. You think they're very slow. When they want to get away from a predator, they can walk pretty quick up into the trees. So there's actually some predators that would definitely eat this. Even the orangutan would eat slow loris. That's another endangered animal saved. And in the national park, very safe here. Yeah. The poachers and thing that they scare on here was guide and everywhere. So the guides and the tourists are watching. So when there is some string activity like an animal poaching activity in here, soon we'll start to figure it out and know it. Well there you are, that's it. That's a slow loris released back into the wild. Now it's time to get back out of this national park and see what else we might come across. And what a place to go looking for wildlife. This park has one of the highest diversities of mammals I know of in Asia. It's home to almost every iconic Asian mammal species. And it is one of the last strongholds of the critically endangered Sumatran orangutans in the wild. We just can't leave without experiencing them. Well, I cannot believe it, I'm right behind me. We have two orangutans, a mother and a little infant. It's so close and they're not that intimidated together up in that tree. It's so human-like, it's incredible. There's only 7,000 critically endangered Sumatran orangutans left in the wild, and this place is a foothold for them. It's quite remarkable that getting that kind of close interaction with an orangutan, keeping distance, because they're obviously wild animals. Be careful. That was a bit of a heart pumping moment. That always happens, but I can't believe that. Cheeky mother trying to chase us off. I reckon not trying to be too aggressive. But at the end of the day, she's just protecting her young like any animal would. Amazing though, to get that kind of close encounter with an orangutan. That marks the end of my time with Samiko. I leave with total admiration for this team, 
fighting to protect Sumatra's endangered wildlife. The resources might be low, but with their passion, it'll keep them going. For Made in the Wild, we will be back because I also want to help make sure we preserve this special place for future generations.